Okay. Hi, I'm Melissa Levine, and I am here with Susan Riley um, to talk about a uh, new-ish volume from uh, the IFLA um, uh, Advisory Committee on Copyright and Other Legal Matters. Um, the book is Navigating Copyright Fi for Librarians. Um, it was published in 2022, um, and it uh, was published in cooperation with DeGreuter. Um, this is the first interview that I've done, so I should also say I work at the University of Michigan Library, um, and I'm chairing the committee right now. Um, and uh, I'm here, as I said, with Susan Riley, who directs the um, Irish Research e-library at, at Maynooth University, and she is involved with copyright and open access matters um, at an international level. Uh, she is a special advisor to the IFLA Advisory Committee for Copyright and Other Legal Matters. I'm going to say CLM going forward for the committee. Um, she's also a member of the new IFLA Advisory Committee for Open Science and Scholarship. Uh, further, she's the chair of Lieber Copyright and Other their other matter other legal matter working group. So she's busy. Um, and in Ireland, she co-chaired the National Open Research Framework Open Access Working Group. So the reason I wanted to talk with Susan uh, is that she wrote the preface to the, we'll, we'll call it the copyright reader, um, as, and is one of three editors, along with Jessica Coates and Victoria Owen, who I'll speak to separately about their chapters. Um, so Susan, you are, you've been involved with IFLA for a long time, and you're an expert advisor to the copyright committee, to CLM. Um, how long have you been involved with IFLA? Because I'm fairly new. Um, I still think of myself as fairly new to IFLA, but um, I think my first IFLA conference was 2012 in Helsinki. And I remember, even though I, I presented two papers there, outside of that, I, I felt really lost because um, it's such a huge conference. And um, it seemed like everybody was, you know, already familiar with IFLA. But I was kind of inspired by the global nature of IFLA and just the, the kind of community feeling there was. So I yeah. resolved to to find ways to get more involved. And um, I started out by attending the open sessions of CLM. So I was an observer at first. And then I became the director of Libra, the Association of European Research Libraries and more involved in advocacy around copyright. At the time, um, there was copyright reform proposals um, being put forward at a European level. So I worked more closely with IFLA on that. And um, I attended uh, CLM meetings to kind of report on activities in Europe. And then I went back into working in libraries and decided that I would actually apply to be a member of CLM. And my time on the committee flew. And I I mean, I've learned so much from the committee members. And um, it's been so inspiring to work with people um, around the world through it and to get to go to the World Intellectual Property Organization and see, you know, see how policy is made. Um, and really? I guess, yeah, it's amazing. Really? <laughs> <laughs> After that, um, uh, I became special advisor um to CLM and you know I've just uh and then got involved in the open access work uh, in IFLA naturally and uh, and now I'm on the um open science and scholarship the new open science and scholarship advisory committee so once you're involved in IFLA it's really hard to to walk away you know yeah. it's it's a really special organization it's taking me a little while I joined right before COVID so I was hoping to go at my first meeting was the one we just had uh, last summer in Rotterdam, and um, it actually helped a lot. Um, I mean, and it also doing something in person, having at least that connectivity and visual for me really has actually has helped a lot with the virtual and, and leveraging that and making that more effective. Um, anyway, the book. Uh, you uh, address several themes in the preface. And I'm just curious um, what like what you would want to emphasize in thinking about the book as a whole, because it's really big. It, it is a big book. Yeah. Um, 
and you know it could have been bigger I say that in the preface there's chapters unwritten there um I guess that's an invitation to somebody <laughs> yes absolutely <laughs> <laughs> and I have some thoughts um on that uh I suppose I didn't want to address themes as such. I wanted to speak as a librarian to librarians about the importance of copyright to our work um, and, um, you know, how intrinsic it is to uh, the existence and functioning of libraries and, you know, how important it is that librarians engage. Um, so I guess I was aware that this is this is this huge book and maybe it isn't. Copyright, I know copyright is an intimidating subject for librarians, um, but it is really important that we engage and we can make a difference when we do engage. So that was the angle that I was, I suppose, coming at, coming from. And also, of course, open access was a theme that, you know, emerged just from, from the beginning of, you know, us deciding to uh, to create this this book so that's a very strong strong theme I think in the preface and um just throughout throughout the book um so yeah it was I suppose to tie try and tie the book together is to just say look this is an important topic for libraries it's complex but you know there's this great network of expertise and you're not alone and you know this book is just the start I, I've been involved with museums and libraries and thus unavoidably copyright for a really long time professionally. Um, and in fact, that's sort of how I ended up in copyright, not the other way around. But um, one of the things that's really interesting to me is how deep one one's expertise and experience can be. And you think you understand the law in another country, let alone your own. And then you realize like, even if you're both speaking the same, like even if I'm reading a non-translated law in English, like from England, or you know, um, in my native language, I realize there's all these cultural and legal assumptions that are baked in that I'm not getting. And that's part of um, wh why I'm particularly interested in the work of the CLM and the way this book um, comes from people with experience in different legal regimes. And so there's a little bit of difference in nuance um, that helps stretch my understanding for librarianship. Um, the book is divided, I think, into four four sections that sort of conceptually organize different chapters. Um, how do you, did you, do you have ideas about how people can use this? Like I'm emphasizing how big this is, but when you take it in pieces, uh, I think the the particular uh, audience and uses are very approachable. Yes, um, and I actually have a a copy of the book. Thank here. you. <laughs> I have the link open to scare screen, but then I uh, yeah, that was yeah. good. I mean, it's it's not so big, you know. It, it actually doesn't look as I only have the electronic version. Yeah. It's funny that doesn't look so intimidating. No, it's I actually um you know because we did all of our editing online um you know it, 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 I never read it from beginning to end because we each had our own sections and we dip in and out, uh, which is I mean exactly how people can use it. But when you see the the physical version, it, it it you know it's very logically laid out and you can go from beginning to end. And I think it starts really look you know it's a lovely start with the copyright basics from Tom and Jessica, which speaks to what you were saying about, you know, there are kind of, there are copyright fundamentals and understanding the why and what of copyright, what, you know, why it exists from the beginning is kind of essential, um, you know, to, to the rest of it, you know, to the new parts and to advocacy and, and just kind of making sense of copyright. And I've, I've worked in, in a lot of different national uh, regimes and just you know having that basic understanding is great um but yeah you can I mean we you can dip in and out if you you know if you're interested in I suppose the base you know if you're working in a research library and you you want to understand research exceptions that's there if you're 
I don't know if you're more interested in what the emerging topics are like in artificial intelligence or if you're, you know, public librarian um, grappling with the ebooks issues um, or, you know, interested in in the the mechanics of making, you know, the legal mechanics of making books accessible um, to people with print disabilities. It's there. So you can you can have your own specialization or, or area of interest um, and 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 kind of connect with this book. You know, you don't have to read the whole thing, but it's totally possible. It's it's funny that you're showing the the hard copy. Um, I'm obviously a paper person. I do read a lot electronically and somehow seeing the volume feels more approachable, even though I've been looking at the online. So, um, so we have an open access version and I can pitch, you know, it's worthwhile to buy a hard copy. Um, go, go to your library to get the hard copy. Cause that's, that's the thing. I mean, it's primarily libraries that buy, you know, the IFLA series books. Um, you know, I'm sure we have it actually. Uh, yeah. Um, then, <laughs> then I can't, I can't use a highlighter in that, that copy. No. Uh, so I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm highlighters. Um, so, um, we've talked, we've talked about different ways people could use this. Um, did you learn anything in putting this together? Like even the process of putting a book together, um, coordinating, editing, working with the publisher, all those kinds of exciting things. Uh, I mean, I mean, so many things, um, uh, I worked with, you know, a great group of editors, uh, each with our own different, you know, sk skills and perspective. I'm a practicing librarian. Um, Victoria, you know, is involved in the teaching side of things. Jessica's, you know, a lawyer. Uh, and then we had Janine Smith as well, kind of keeping us in line um, as the kind of overall series editor uh, and really knowing the ropes, she, you know, her expertise in terms of put it, how to put a book together in the process so she fine. works. She works for the publisher. Um, she. Uh, I think she works for Ifla and works with the publisher. Okay. She did. She's she's retired now. So that yeah. that that role was really helpful. It, to it have was. Yeah. It graphic was. director. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So the. I mean. Um. Uh. It took a long time to to you know to get the book out there because you're you're searching for authors you're um you know we we made sure all of the articles were um double blind peer reviewed wow that was quite a process um and then did the you know, authors get the feed the authors got the feedback anonymously yeah okay. yes yeah, yeah they did um and then because we knew uh, that the book was going to be open access, um, you know, we made special efforts to um, to make sure that as much as the content of the content that was cited within, within the book is is also available open access. So, um, I mean, there's a, a lot to learn um, and a lot of work involved, but I think we had such a great group of editors. Um, it was uh, actually a very enjoyable process and I would encourage people to, you know, to consider uh, this kind of work. It, it is, it does take a lot of time, but I think, you know, it's it's worthwhile and, you know, you do learn a lot. You, you just mentioned something. So was there a, an editorial choice or encouragement for authors to um, focus on citations and things, re resources that are open access or um, like I've worked on some projects where explicitly we will only use things that are available open access, but that's not necessarily everything that we really should be. And I sometimes wonder about that. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah. Uh, so we didn't prescribe and say mm -hmm. you have to use, you can only use material that's available open access. But what we encouraged um, authors to do was to where it was available open access to use um, to cite the open access source. 
Um, so it wasn't a rule that we set out from the beginning, um, but uh, during the, I guess the the editing process, we 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 thought we encouraged them to seek to find the open access version or help them to. Yeah, I wouldn't be. I would be surprised if that wasn't the impulse anyway of most of these authors, mm -hmm. especially in um, an internationally produced work where even if you have access to hard copies of things, you won't have them everywhere, uh, country to country. And that would, I guess, reduce the utility for something like this in particular. Um, you know, I think, you know, their impulse might be that, but I think when some of our authors work in academia and, you know, you don't always consider that your reader might not be also in academia with access to these resources. So, you know, it's, it's, um, it's not a given. Um, but I will say that I don't think any of the authors would have participated in this book if it was not from the outset an open access book. So that leads me sort of the, to the last general topic I wanted to touch on is the connection in your thinking between this book and your work on the IFLA Open Science and Scholarship Advisory Committee, which is really just getting started in its work, I would say. Very yes. much so. Yeah. We've had yeah. one, one meeting. Yeah. Um. So uh, the, there was a an IFLA Open Access um, uh, t task force or working group um, that uh, I suppose was set up to to look at progressing the IFLA statement on open access and what emerged from that was the proposal to have a new advisory committee which is you know um, that's that's a big deal there's not that many IFLA advisory committees um, so how does this book relate to um, the work of Phyllis I mean I think it's an embodiment of something. Yeah. Is that a favorite way? Y or a yeah. Path? We set out to prove something when we when we proposed this book and we proposed that it was open access. And that was to prove that IFLA could publish an open access book and that it would have impact. Um so and I think it has had impact. I understand it's very popular. As they call them the green series. what do they call it? The green series. Yeah, the, yeah. The green because their books are all green. Um, yeah, but they they weren't open access. So so this was I mean this was the the first um, uh, book intended to be open access under the series, and we had to make a business case for it. Uh, um, I, you know, we thought you know it was um, an extension of Ifla's values to to st start making these books open access, um, but there's a cost associated. Um, but our feeling was, and definitely my feeling, I I feel very privileged to have been part of CLM and not everybody's going to get to be part of CLM and have access to that expertise, but that expertise needs to be shared. And that's what IFLA is about, you know, this network of sharing of expertise and being able to build on that. So we wanted people to um, reuse the, the content uh, in our book, build on it and, you know, adapt it in a way that was, you know, useful to them within their own contexts and settings. And I think that's very much echoes what the Open Science and Scholarship Advisory Committee is about, is about, you know, opening up um, access to information uh, and, you know, supporting freedom of expression. Ultimately. There's so much going on um in each individual in individual countries. I yeah. mean there's it's it's a real effort to keep up with going what's going on here. And I guess that's that's a good problem to have. Um but getting a, a handle on sort of a global lens is uh exciting and important. Um yeah. It is. And I think, you know, whatever you're doing locally, you're always looking to other examples in other countries um, to sort of guide the development of, of your own best practices. Um, so that's really useful. And I think, you know, 
there is maybe an equity piece in open science and scholarship that isn't being fully addressed. And I think um, IFLA and libraries have uh, a role there. I think also I mentioned that I there could be a few more chapters <laughs> in this book and um, you know, I would see those chapters emerging from the work of of um, that we're doing in this group. So things like um, rights retention mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, secondary publication rights. These are emerging. They weren't addressed in the book, but it's kind of, uh, you know, a con continuation of the conversation that Navigating Copyright for Libraries uh, started, you know, there was by being an open access book, um, by being an accessible book. So there was a lot of effort put into making this book available in um, an accessible format. Um, and, you know, starting the conversation about, you know, library supporting open licenses. Um, and, you know, that some of the challenges that we see now in terms of access can be addressed by embracing open access and open science. Um, so there's definitely a strong connection there. And um, also it, it it speaks to, to the continued importance of CLM as well and the expertise there. It's, it's interesting that as librarians, you, it's important to understand and be able to navigate the copyright issues. But uh, in addition to trying to baby, bridge our, our understanding of differences, uh, understanding the mechanics um, and how do these copyright issues um, behave or how do you navigate like, okay, if you need a knife, uh, if you do need a license, where do you go? Do you, and how do you get that? Those mechanics are really, um, uh, you know, I'm, I'm doing some work on national libraries now and I'm looking at the framework of interlibrary loan in our country and um, when you really sit down with people who do document delivery, it's breathtaking what they do and how they do it. And it's, it's, there are moments where I just, it's like, maybe I don't even want to know. It's too, like you make the magic happen. Um, yeah. yeah. I, I, th I was thinking about that. And I think that's the underlying theme of, of this book is that putting policy into practice and having practice inform policy. So librarians are kind of, they're there at that intersection. So, you know, the Marrakesh Treaty would be meaningless without libraries actually, you know, implementing it at local level, um, you know, making those book, working to make those books accessible. And um, at the same time, our, our practice, um, you know, can inform the development of policy. So if we don't speak out, you know, where we see copyright not working for our, our users, um, then, you know, and engage in the, use our experience to inform the development of policy. So like a librarian like me going to WIPO and standing up saying, hey, we, we need to address, you know, digital preservation. Um, uh, so you need to be kind of, I guess, conversant, you know, in copyright to be able to make that case, but it's important that we do. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's it's really important to the to talk to the people who are actually implementing, you know, those those processes. You know, when documents apply, and yeah. um, and you have to be a little bit brave. Some of those forms yeah. are kind of intimidating. Yeah. Um, I I also uh, think that we have an opportunity and need to be sort of translational to a general, to the general public, because sometimes we talk to each other in very specialized kind of ways. And I find that like, if you ask people, do, does your family know what you do? They generally don't know what you do. <laughs> They're like, we're glad you're happy, but. Um, so uh, we should finish up here, but is there anything else you'd like to share about this? Because this conversation is giving me ideas for other things other assignments I should be giving you no oh um, no um like is there a backlist project should we be looking at the earlier ifla green books to see if any are ripe for flipping to open like you don't need to answer it was just an a question that came to mind 
I, I think there there potentially is, you know. Um I think, you know, with the open um the open science and scholarship uh advisory committee, there has, you know, a case needs to be made for 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 if, if the IFLA journal and the IFLA series to become fully open, I think there's evidence enough that this is impactful. I don't know, and I'm not even sure it impacts the sale of books because it is, you know, libraries buying the books. So um, I guess by retrospectively making our books open, it would give them a new lease of life, in fact. Yeah. That's, that's what I think. And I also think people would buy personal copies I think being able to see things online, I don't know, I don't know who's done the like the sociological research on people's use, but anyway, I should stop there. Um, <laughs> really appreciate your your working on work do, producing the book. And I look forward to speaking with the other authors and um working together. Yeah. And and thanks so so much, Melissa, for taking the initiative on kind of promoting this book and, you know, just running with it. It's exactly what we wanted. We wanted others to sort of take ownership and, and you, you know, use it, it in, in however they see fit. You mentioned at the beginning how short the terms on different committees are. And it's so easy for like produce something in two years and then it sort of gets lost because other people are focused on other things. And this is um too valuable, I think, for that to happen. So, yeah. all right. Thank you. I'm going to stop there. Thanks.